Hi guys, it's me again, Conrad from Don Grammatize. It's been over a month now since the channel's premiere, time in which the number of you, those who decided to stay with me for longer and clicked the subscribe button, has risen manifold, for which I would like to thank you so much. I would also like to say how grateful I am for all the views, shares, likes and comments, which keep me happy, busy and inspired. Down there, you will find the video's description in which I listed all the subscribers who have joined the Don't Grammatize community so far. You are the trailblazers, the pioneers, the founding fathers of this initiative, and no one will ever deprive you of this status. Congratulations on that. Keep being apostles of the good grammar, and I'm sure that one day there will be thousands of us. For those of you who will be with us for the first time, a big warm Welcome. I hope that you will like what you're about to see and hear and will join the ranks of our growing community. So, what has Conrad baked for you today, my dear knowledge greedy audience? Today, the chef is serving a two course meal consisting of two structures, used to and be used to. They look and sound similar, don't they? They do. But used to and be used to are two entirely different structures with two entirely different building blocks and usage. Right. So let's start with used to, which I think is the more common and the less complex one. This structure has some similarities with the past simple tense. They both talk about the past, they both talk about states and actions, they both need a verb in its past form and auxiliary did to form negatives and questions. And they both talk about past habits and things that were true sometime in the past. And that would be all as far as the similarities are concerned. Let's now focus on the differences. The most important one is that while past simple informs about what was true in the past, suggesting nothing about what is true now, used to suggests that the situation has changed. So, he played football with his brother, he did it somewhere in the past, but we don't know whether he still plays football with his brother or not. He used to play football with his brother, he did in the past, but he doesn't anymore. The choice of used to instead of past simple is intentional on the part of the speaker, who this way wants to suggest a contrast, a change. Having clarified all the differences and similarities between past simple and used to, we can now focus on the latter. To help us understand how a sentence with used to is formed, we will use this past simple sentence here. We obviously have the subject, and then we have two verbs. The first one is in its past form and is followed by a to. Why? Well, this is because it is a semi-modal verb. What? Semi what? Chillax. Don't grammatize. Listen. Used to, as well as have to, but also be supposed to, uh, be going to, are all representatives of semi-modal verbs. I'm sure that you have already heard about modal verbs. These are verbs such as will, can, should, may. They have some common features. Semi-modal verbs do too, but I won't be going to this today. I will, however, in my next video, to which I'm already inviting you. But first, I have to record it, because I haven't even started yet. But shush, don't tell anyone, especially the YouTube algorithm. So, subject, uh, verb number one, semi-modal, used to, and ver verb number two is in its bare infinitive form. So, the one without the two. And voila. I used to play Tetris as a boy. I used to. I don't anymore. These days, I play much more sophisticated games. Another example. He used to have a US visa. This sentence implies that the he used to have this, arguably, one of the most coveted documents in the world, but no more does. Maybe it's invalid now, maybe it expired. And the final example, they used to watch Seinfeld every Thursday. These days, they watch some other sitcoms, but once they would sit back comfortably on the sofa, uh, turn on NBC and let that highly acclaimed series from the 90s make them laugh. Uh, so, these would be uh, positive used to sentences. Uh, subject, uh, used to, a semi-modal, and another verb in its bare infinitive form. Let's now move on to 
negative sentences with the used to structure. As I have already pointed out, they need auxiliary didn't, then we have use without the D, followed by to, remember, semimodal, and another verb in its bare infinitive form, so the one without the two, like in this example. Ed Sheeran didn't used to be on tour that much. These days he travels the world almost incessantly, but back in the days he was a street performer, a so-called basker, so there is a stark contrast between how he used to live and what his life looks like today. And when there is a complete change, a U-turn, a turnaround in somebody's life, this is where we employ the used to structure. Another example, the Super Bowl didn't used to be played on the second Sunday of February. Up to 2021, it was played on the first Sunday of February. So now Americans will have to order millions of kilograms of chicken wings a week later. And the final example of a negative used to sentence, James Webb Telescope didn't used to orbit the sun about 1 million miles from Earth. Now it does, and it is sending us such spectacular images of the cosmos that President Biden himself released the first of them during a public event at the White House. Okay, so let's sum up negative used to sentences. Auxiliary didn't, used to, no D, and another verb in its bare infinitive form. Let's now move on to questions where we need did before the subject, then the subject, then again used to with no D and again uh, another verb in its per infinitive form. Like in this sentence, for example, did the Vogue magazine used to cost 10 cents? Well, with today's prices, it's hard to believe it, but it really did. Today, the price is much higher, mostly because it's been over a century since the magazine's first issue, so it is no longer true that the Vogue magazine costs 10 cents, but it used to. Another example, did Amber Heard used to be happily married to Johnny Depp? Well, we can assume she did, otherwise, what's the point of saying yes to anybody in the first place, right? So let's say she used to be a happy wife of Mr. Sparrow. And the third and final example of a used to question, did Churchill used to lead the UK government? The answer is yes, he did, he used to, he was prime minister twice and he is generally believed to be one of Britain's greatest PMs. Okay, let's sum up used to questions. First, did, then, the subject, then, used to, with no D, and finally, uh, another verb in its bare infinitive form. Okay, so let's sum up the used to structure. It is used to talk about discontinued habits, like in I used to smoke, I don't now, or to talk about past situations which are no longer true, like in I used to like her, now I don't. Um, Positive sentences, subject, semi-modal, used to, bare infinitive. In negatives, auxiliary didn't, used to, no D here, and another verb in its bare infinitive form. In questions, did, before the subject, again, used to, with no D, and another verb in its bare infinitive form. And remember, in this structure, so in the used to structure, used, is a verb. Why is it so important? Well, it is because the second structure we are discussing today is be used to. And although we see and hear used to again, it is an entirely different one. To help you understand the be used to structure, we will use a very simple present simple sentence, namely, I am interested in swimming. First, we have the subject, then be, then an adjective, then a preposition, and then a gerund, so a verb with ing, which functions as a noun. So unlike in the first structure we are discussing today, here used is an adjective, not a verb, to is a preposition, and then we have a gerund, not an infinitive. And these are the structural differences between the two heroes of today's video.
And how about what differs the two when it comes to how and when they are used? Used to expresses past discontinued habits and routines, while be used to talks about present, past and future and talks about things people are accustomed to, people are familiar with. Like here, I am used to playing RPGs. Again, subject, be, adjective, preposition and gerund. Another example, Jasmine is used to flying Aladdin's carpet. She does it repeatedly. She is accustomed to being picked up by Aladdin and then flying to the movies together. They are familiar with such situation occurring. And a final example, Tom and Jerry are used to fighting each other. Well, in fact, it is basically all they do. Tom the cat is constantly of pursuit of the clever mouse who steals food and who, thanks to her cunning abilities and luck, manages to outwit the attacker. So Tom is used to chasing uh, Jerry. Jerry is accustomed to Tom's attempts to capture her and the audience are familiar with the distraction and mayhem that are the result of their rivalry. So that's pretty much it when it comes to positive be used to sentences. To form a negative, we just add not, which negates the P. For instance, I am not used to haggling over price. In other words, I am not used to negotiating a lower price or I'm not familiar with trying to pay less. Some people are, I'm not, I don't like it, others do, some accept it, others see it as unethical. Another example, John isn't used to getting up early. He hardly ever does it. He's not used to it, he's accustomed to sleeping in, he's not an early riser, he's a late riser, but it will have to change soon because John has recently got a new job as a school bus driver. And the final example of a negative be used to sentence, you and I aren't used to commuting. Let's rephrase it, we aren't accustomed to traveling between our flat and our workplace. Let's rephrase it again, we aren't familiar with using a means of transport to get to work. However, soon we will have no choice but to familiarize ourselves with public transport since we will leave university and enter the labor market. And finally, how to form a be used to question. We simply place the correct form of the verb be before the subject, as simple as that. Like in this sentence, for example, are the Smurfs used to being chased by Gargamel? Unfortunately, they are. Gargamel wants to catch the poor little things, eat them or transform them into gold. So the Smurfs are accustomed to the wizard trying to destroy or capture them. Luckily for all of us who root on Papa Smurf and the rest of the Blues, he suffers one defeat after another. Example number two. Am I used to answering grammar questions? Am I accustomed to it? Yes, I am. It is my passion. It is my job. I have been doing it for over 10 years. I do it on a daily basis, practically seven days a week. So yes, Conrad is used to answering his students' questions about grammar. And the final example, is the earth used to revolving around the sun? Well, knowing that it has been doing so for 4.5 billion years, I think that you will agree that we can say that it is. So, the Earth is accustomed to orbiting the Sun, the only star in our solar system. Our planet is used to this journey, taking it 365 days. Right, so we have now covered both structures with used to. Let's briefly go over them once again and have a look at the key points. First, used to. Only past suggests a change. Used is a verb, a semimodal, and is followed by two plus infinitive. Like in, I used to think differently. I didn't used to know that. Did you? Used to? Use? Used to correctly? And be used to. Past, present, and future talks about things people are accustomed to. Used is an adjective. Used is followed by two plus gerund. Like in, I am used to reading to my daughter. I am not used to wearing skirts. Or are you used to lifting weights? Okay, so that's all folks. I hope this video helped you to understand used to and be used to better. If there has been anything unclear in the video, post a question in the comment section and I'll be most happy to help.
Speaking of the comment section, I prepared a short 10 sentence quiz for you to see how well you and the two used to structures are getting on. You will find the quiz in the video's very first comment. Have a look there, employ your freshly acquired knowledge and post your answers in a comment. Fingers crossed, good luck. Once again, thank you for your subscriptions, likes, shares and comments. I'm happy that you're with me and that we'll be learning together. And one more thing, remember, English grammar is not a drama, so don't grammatize. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.